you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. And thank you for sending the spirit of Elijah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. To turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children, the children, the fathers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are great. You are worthy, worthy, worthy of our praise. <laughs> For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endures to all generations. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endures to all generations. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. I love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. You know, I am so okay with God being God. Me too. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking last night, waking up to like, lightning filling the room so much that it it looked like the lights were on, you know? And thunder so loud that it just felt like it almost felt like it shakes the bed, right? And like I remember in that moment thinking of how delighted I was because the Bible talks about God's voice thundering and lightning coming from him and I'm, and I'm like, I'm like listening to this crazy, massive storm. And like, I just think it's so cool that God is so mighty that he can just do what he wants to do. I mean, I just think that is amazing. I am so okay with God being God. <laughs> I'm so thankful that God is God. And the reason I'm bringing that up is a lot of people are not okay with God being God. You, they want God to be like them. They, they want God to be like they think he should be. I think it's really cool that I don't know very much about. I, I think it's really cool that I am so little and I have such little knowledge and that he is so infinitely bigger than I am, bigger than anything that I could even conceive or comprehend. Like, he's God. <clears throat> he's God. And he's totally and completely sovereign. He knows what he's doing, and I don't have to. I'm not insulted by God knowing what he's doing and me not. I am totally okay with faith that does not see to believe, but believes. I'm really okay. I'm also okay if God wants to tell me something and I go, oh, he just told me what he wants to do and then say it and he does it. But I just don't feel helpless when I don't know what he's doing. I'm really okay with like coronavirus. Yeah, I don't I don't know. God does. Let's just love him. <laughs> Let's just love him because really and truly you know faith, we've been talking about this a lot lately. Faith is not just a feeling and faith is not just a set of rules or, or a set of beliefs, a belief system. Faith is is trusting an actual God, like an actual trust. Like, you know, actual trust. It's like, it's like our part. <laughs> it's his gift, but our part. It's like, it's his gift. But our part, he gives us the gift of faith, and it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But it's like if, if you want to buy something, you know, you give that currency to buy. It's like 
faith in God, that faith is your part of 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 <laughs> going to heaven. <laughs> Healing, deliverance, whatever it is. And truly every place where I do not have peace and I cannot rest, I find a brand new place of more surrender and trust. And uh, Kevin asked me to sing this song, taking requests, apparently. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Not really. Uh, and so I want to talk a little bit about this song. This song um, I wrote in worship to the Lord in, in surrender. And surrender is worship. Surrendering what you know and don't know and choosing to trust him is such a beautiful act of worship <coughs> like when a Abraham obeyed God without knowing the outcome and when he took his son in obedience to the Lord to the altar and raised the knife on the promise that God had given him what an act of worship what an act of worship and one night the Lord talked to me about my son and he said your heart is not at rest you still don't trust me here. And so I just said, well, then I'm going to. I don't know how many days it's going to take. I don't know how many. It, it actually was a few weeks from that point that I could say my heart finally rested. But I chose that night. Well, I'm going to. I don't know how to even yet. I don't know how to position my heart to where my heart has fully surrendered this situation but I say tonight I will and wrote this song in an act of worship <clears throat> I'm gonna trust in the Lord like a never before gonna give all my worries away hey I'm gonna trust in the Lord like I never before gonna give all my worries away hey I'm gonna trust in the Lord like I never before gonna give all my worries away hey I'm gonna trust in Give all my worries away, hey, cause you are holy and you love me, I'm your treasure and you are mine forever, you are holy and you love me, you're my treasure. You are holy and you love me. I'm your treasure and you are mine forever. You are holy and you love me. You're my treasure and I am yours forever. I'm gonna trust in the Lord like I never before gonna give all my worries away hey I'm gonna trust in the Lord like I never before gonna give all my worries away I'm starting today cause where I don't see I have to remember it where I can't rest, I don't trust. Where I can't rest, I don't trust. And that is a test of my love. Where I can't rest, I don't trust. Where I can't rest, I don't trust. Where I can't rest, I still don't trust. And that is a test, it's just my love. Where I can't rest, I don't trust. Where I can't rest. Where I can't rest, I don't know I'm loved. Where I can't rest, I still don't trust. Where I can't rest, I don't trust. 
Where I can't rest, I don't know I'm loved. Where I can't rest, I don't trust. And that is a test of my love. I'm gonna trust in the Lord. It's a decision. Come on, y'all, make a choice. Make a choice with coronavirus. Do you know what's going to happen? No. But you can choose right now. With your job, do you know what's going to happen? Maybe not. Can you trust? Are you loved? Are you loved? Can you trust? 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 Every place that you recognize you cannot rest. It is because you don't trust. But that is a place where you don't know you're loved. <laughs> Come on, love, 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 raining down on us, 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 us. Love, 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 raining down on us, us, us. Oh, love, 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 raining down on us, helping us. Jesus reigns down on us. The blood of Jesus reigns down on us. When you put your trust in perfect love, put your trust in perfect love, put your trust in perfect love. The cross is proof of perfect love. Is the cross enough? Is the cross enough? Is the cross enough? Is the cross enough? Is the cross enough for you to feel loved? Is the cross enough for you to feel loved? Love, 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 love raining down on us, us, us. Jesus, blood, 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 perfect love, love, love raining down on us. Can you put your trust? Perfect love. Can you put your trust in perfect love? Can you put your trust in perfect love? Can you put your trust in perfect love? Is what he did enough to trust? Is what he did enough for you to trust in perfect love? Is what he did enough for you to trust that you are loved? Is perfect love casts off fear so you can say fear? You're no longer welcome here. 
Go in every place in your life where you, you recognize you still have fear. Why don't you take that fear right now? This is what I do when I'm at home. These kind of things right here. Oh, I see that. Oh, I feel that. Okay. <laughs> All right, that place right there where there's fear. I put that place under the blood. And I put my trust that your perfect love covers me. That is enough for me to place my trust in your perfect love. I thank you that your perfect love casts out all fear. And without a feeling of strong courage, I don't suddenly feel, you know, <laughs> like Goliath. I still feel like a little David. <laughs> but a little David with trust. Trust in the Lord. And then you can truly say, I come at you in the name of, of the Lord. And you can say, no fear, leave. And you don't, listen, don't wait on a feeling of faith before you tell fear to go. You don't have to wait on some feeling of like, whoa, <laughs> I got it. I got this. No, it's just, man, I don't know what's going to happen, but God has got me. And so I say, fear, you are not welcome here. Get out of this part of my life and that part of my heart. I'm not doing this anymore. We're, we're, not, we're not doing this anymore. And then you can just say, okay, I'm going to trust in the Lord. And, and that took a few weeks for it to work out in my heart, in my mind, um, how to really position my heart uh, in trust. But I made the decision that night. I, I said, okay, you've shown me that I don't trust. Then I'm telling you, by your power, by your spirit, with your help, I do trust by faith, and I will learn to live in the peace that comes. Uh, because really and truly, once you give the Lord your trust, he releases. Did you know that peace is his job and trust is yours? Isaiah 26, 3 says that he will keep his heart in perfect peace. The man who puts his mind on him because he trusts in him. <laughs> So you having peace is not your job. You trust in God is. God's job is giving you peace. Say, God's job is peace. Job is peace. My job is trust. Because a lot of times I think a lot of people start, like, f trying to manufacture peace. Wait, I don't have peace. I got to have peace. I got to have peace. I got to have peace. That's not your job. You just trust. Peace will come. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 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 <laughs> Just praise the Lord. Right now? Praise the Lord. Okay. Thank praise you, the Jesus. Lord, wife. Praise the Lord. We miss you guys on Jesus family, whoever's watching. Amen. We miss, I miss all y'all very, very much. Um, God is faithful. Before we dive in, actually, if you want to open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 3. We're going we're gonna to jump around just a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about trust. It wasn't coincidence that Shine sang that song. Certainly hadn't thought about that. We didn't talk about it much. But um, our air conditioning unit speaking to us. Praise the Lord, Shire. Is all okay? All is okay. We got a free warranty. I want to talk to anybody that's watching right now. Especially Eyes on Jesus community, I want to talk to people that feel uh, so scared and that they don't belong in this church. You know what I'm talking about, Cheyenne? I feel like everybody in our church like has dealt with perfect? that before. Yeah, if they're not perfect, if they're not living perfect, holy lives, that, that they don't match up to perfect, holy people that don't go to this church. So I, I have this feeling, and I know so many people in our church have felt like I'm just not living right enough to be there. <laughs> well, neither are we, right, Shai? So <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, th we do strive for holiness and we do strive for righteousness, but I want to tell you that if you're not perfectly holy, then you're human. Praise God. 
And you can be a part of this church if you'd like to be a part of this church. Um, I say that because too many people condemn themselves thinking that that you're perfect. I think you're perfect. So, yes, there we go. Yes, I think so. We've perfect. gathered tonight, Kevin and I, uh, to tell you that I'm not perfect. <laughs> and you guys already know I'm not. So, we did it. Praise the Lord. Also, I think people are worried about the uncertainty of, of finances, life, sickness, insurance, mortgage payment, rent payment. And I think one of the things that we need to remember is what's the only certainty, Shy, in this whole life? That's true. <laughs> Who is the only certainty? That's we, You are going to die. That's We're just here to encourage you. We just want to encourage you in case that you're afraid you're going, you're going to, to die. die yes. We all are, so at some point. <laughs> but God is the only certainty, correct? Right. <laughs> right. God right. is the only certainty, and so I want to encourage you, in these times of uncertainty, you can live in certainty that God is good. Yes. And that God is in control, and that God is on the throne. And I don't know that we need anything else. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. <coughs> We're going to start in verse 14. If you're a note taker, you can write this down. God's love is beyond comprehension. Shine, are you taking notes? No, because I forgot the verses. Just kidding. <laughs> You'll probably remember it. No, maybe. God's love is beyond comprehension. Do you think they're there yet? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. Do you think everybody's there? I'm here. You're there? I'm mm -hmm. there too. Say amen online if you're there. Good. Sounds about right. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. Okay, here we go. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him if you don't have as you trust in him underlined highlighted circled starred you might want to do that then christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him your roots will grow down into god's love and keep you strong really if we go back to verse seven that that's really interesting is we used to ask god into our hearts as, as little kids just ask the lord into your heart and you're saved your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. That may you experience, it's like he's saying, I hope that you get to experience this. Because it's not guaranteed if you're not in Christ. And I think that's one of the problems dealing with this, this corona thing is so many people are experiencing the fright and the fear surrounding the situation. But the point is, is that we have the ability to grow down into God's love and keep us strong. If you actually know him, you're actually going to know how wide, how long, and how high, and how deep his love is. But if you're not in him, you can't experience those. May you experience the love of Christ, though, it's not too, or though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish 
infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Please jump on your Bible. Okay. So that was number one. God's love is beyond comprehension. Number two, God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. Let's go to Psalms 103. And we're going to start at verse 11. Psalms 103, verse 11. God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. Everybody probably there, you think? For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. Circle, fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. I just want to encourage you that you're going to die and that God remembers that you are only dust. (laughs) Our days on earth are like grass, like wildflowers we bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever. (laughs) With those who fear him, circle fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. The Lord has made the heavens his throne. From there he rules over everything. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom. Let all that I am praise the Lord. From everlasting to everlasting, his love reigns. Number three. Because of the cross, we have freedom. Stay in Psalm 103. We're going to go to verse 10. There's a lot. There's a million scriptures we can always go over. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. He does not punish. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. The cross. The cross, the cross. I read this earlier today. Um, Number four is the greatness of our God. Let's slip up into Jeremiah 31. Online, give us feedback how the the volume sounds. We're trying something new. I want to thank Austin for taking a whole 10 minutes out of his life to (laughs) fix something that I thought was going to take several weeks. And took him 10 minutes. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 31, verse 35. The greatness of our God, number four. It is the Lord who provides the sun to light the day and the moon and stars to light the night. Who provides that? 
and who stirs up the sea, who stirs the sea into roaring waves. His name is the Lord of heaven's armies. And this is what he says. I am as likely to reject my people Israel as I am to abolish the laws of nature. This is what the Lord says. Just as the heavens cannot be measured and the foundations of the earth cannot be explored, so I will not consider casting them away for the evil they have done. I, the Lord, have spoken. (laughs) We're going to read that again. It is the Lord who provides the sun to light the day and the moon and stars to light the night and who stirs the sea into roaring waves. His name is the Lord of heaven's armies, and this is what he says. I am as likely to reject my people Israel as I am to abolish the laws of nature. (laughs) This is what the Lord says. Just as the heavens cannot be measured and the foundations of the earth cannot be explored. So I will not consider casting them away for the evil they have done. I, the Lord, have spoken. I love how God is God. And there are so many passages where he lets us know that he is God. He says the heavens cannot be measured. Cannot. The foundations of the earth cannot be explored. Let's go to Romans 5, verse 8. Doubt does not affect reality. (laughs) I wonder if anybody's doubted in this time. You know, I... I've uh, I started posting online mainly because I have more free time, mm-hmm. and I love to stir it up. It's one of my favorite things to do is kind of stir it up a little bit. Um, and I posted something the other day by by Smith Wigglesworth, and it wasn't like uh, him throwing a dead person against the wall. <laughs> it wasn't radical. It was like. What the Bible says a believer is and the sadness of why the church is in the state that it's in. And it's really interesting to see how people respond to things that are actually true. It's really interesting because the people that I'm talking to are people I haven't spoken to in years and years and years and years. And they're responding with things like, I can't, I'm not going to go completely into it, but they're responding with things that are coming from like seeker sensitive churches. And one gentleman actually challenged me and he said, I hope that whoever's writing this and posting this down looks into the mirror first. I thought, absolutely. And they were saying Jesus always, always went after unbelievers with love and truth. To give them hope and encourage them. And so my thought, it wasn't my thought, I wrote it down. My, my response was, the greatest thing that somebody can do is let somebody know if they're not on the right path. To me, that's the greatest act of love. Amen. And it doesn't mean you don't do that in love. It doesn't mean you don't do that in truth. But love is not greater than truth because he is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible does say God is love. So he is both. He cannot be either or. He is truth. He is life. He is love. And I think about how many people are doubting in this time. And what are we doubting? For 400 plus years, the Israelites, they talked about the wonders of God while they were in slavery. 400 years. We're on like, what, day five? We're on day six, quarantine-ish. Not even mandatory. Just recommended, right? <sighs> Just don't know about my life. That's right. I hear a lot about finances, and I'm not saying be ignorant of your finances, but we're on like day six. The Israelites are on day, 
Well, I can't do that kind of math. <laughs> Year 430. And they're talking about what happened, what, what God did, what God has done. Doubt is not the worst thing in the whole world as long as it doesn't formulate into a thought pattern, as long as it doesn't formulate into a belief. But C.B. Joshua talks about ahead, that. Go, well, he talks about doubt is natural and as long as it leads you to Jesus. As long as it leads as you long to as Jesus. Because the important thing is your faith. Is your faith. So if your doubts get answered and and resolve in faith yay (laughs) if your doubts lead you away from god then that's but you see what i'm saying so like yes everyone has doubts i've had doubts today i have stronger faith tonight are your doubts in god or in you me my doubts are in me. And has God has God ever given us a reason to doubt him? Never. No. The answer is no. Yeah, but you don't know my life. I don't have to. I know him. Right. So if you doubt and you have doubt in your life, if it's not leading you to Jesus Christ, if it's not leading you to the cross, if it's not leading you to repentance, if it's not leading you to join peace, to the places that he comes from, if it's leading you to fear and anxiety and worry, that doubt was planted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you could just remember what he did, all it takes sometimes for me is reminding myself what he's already done. Amen. And all of a sudden it's like, who who am I doubting? Amen. Why would I have unbelief? Why, Amen. why, why? Amen. Romans 5 verse 8. Let's just read the whole thing. Start at verse 1. Yay. Romans 5. Romans 5. I can't read because I don't have glasses. I just swear to make it out. But hmm. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, if you're at home, say by faith. By faith. By faith we I'm have peace God. <laughs> with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for uh. us. Now, it does not say, therefore, we've been made right, we have been made right in God's sight because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done for us, mm-hmm. which is the hyper grace reading of this passage. <laughs> therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Mm-hmm. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Notice doubt fits nowhere in that passage. Where would you put it? Nowhere. Can I say something right there? Is that okay? Or will it stop the train? Okay. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight. Not ours. Not ours. God's sight. Because <laughs> I have not found a day that I looked right in my sight. <laughs> no, don't throw it. There are too many people that do find themselves right in their own sight, though. God's sight. God's sight. That is what is to give you peace. Not your mirror. Or your Instagram. Or your parents' opinion. Or your anything. You have been made right in God's sight. (laughs) By faith. faith. Because of what Jesus Christ. Not what you did or didn't do. Works does not save you. Correct. <laughs> I had a conversation earlier, and a lot of us have faced this, so it just would be, um, I think, fitting to say this here. If you have fallen into temptation or you're dealing with a new struggle or you're whatever, whatever, whatever it is, 
uh, it takes humility. S- you know, I talked about last week that when I don't feel loved, I have to humble myself to receive the Lord's love. And remember, it takes humility also to repent and True. come back. You have to repent by faith that God forgives you. You don't repent. And I'm saying this because everybody deals with it. So if you fall, you just you just prove that you're not perfect and God is. You know, it's God who's perfect. And so but don't repent in fear that he won't forgive you. Repent in faith. Let your whole life now be saturated. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Let your whole life. Whoa. <laughs> Somebody's getting free right now. I can feel it. Let your whole life be saturated in faith. Let everything you do be done 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 in faith. Stop trying to be perfect by effort. Stop trying to be perfect by effort in the name of Jesus. He is perfect. 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 It's not your your perfection anyway. I'm not leaving this moment in the name of Jesus. Put your faith in a perfect God. Put your faith in a perfect God. Put your faith in a perfect God. And the. And the perfect sacrifice of the perfect lamb. The spotless lamb. The spotless lamb. The perfection of God and the perfection of what he decided would make you perfect. It is in his sight. You don't have to be perfect in my sight. Or your sight. Or your mother's sight. In the name of, we we need to press in right here. Right here, right here, right here. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is doing a work right now in hearts. The Holy Ghost is doing a work right now. Lord, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your spirit because when you continue to try to be perfect by effort, you are living according to the law and you are making that sin that you're trying not to commit everything you want. All of a sudden, it has more power over you than the Holy Spirit. Be led by Holy Spirit. Let everything you do be done in faith. Let everything you do be done in faith. Faith in the life of Christ. Faith in the life of Christ. He is working it out in your life, and you have a part of working that out too, but don't stop when you stumble. (laughs) Don't stop when you stumble. When you stumble, you get up and you run to him. That is not the time to run away from him. That is not the time to run away from others. I'm telling you, with social distancing, you do not have to distance from Jesus Christ. And the body by faith, in the name of Jesus. It is when you stumble, I want everyone, and I am going to hear the ones who are watching online by faith, I want you to say, when I stumble, I will arise. There's a scripture about that. Hang on, Google it. When I stumble, I will arise. When I, sw- when I stumble, I will arise, and I will keep running to him, not away I will not hide in shame. I will not hide in fear. I will not hide in guilt. When I stumble, I'll get up and I will run in faith. 
I will continue running in faith in Jesus' name. In Jesus, not right now. In Jesus' name. 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 name. Come on, I feel the Holy Spirit washing hearts right now. And see, it may be someone in this room right now. It may be someone in months from now. Months from now, you may watch this and go, oh, my goodness, I have been so focused on what I look like in my eyes, what I look like in my church's eyes. But I have been made right in God's sight by faith because of what Christ has done. Because of what Christ has done. So when you stumble, repent in faith, but continue running. (laughs) Continue running. Because the point is that you keep the faith. The point is that you maintain eye contact with Jesus. Eye contact with Jesus. Continue running. Do not stop. Do not die when you stumble. Get up and keep running this race. In faith, let do everything in faith. Do everything in faith. Do everything in faith. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I feel the presence of the Lord so strong. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, let us come to you in humility. Let us come to you in humility, Lord. Let us come to you in humility, in faith that we have been made right in God's sight by faith because of what Jesus Christ has done. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, thank you, Jesus. If you found one, send it into Uh, Maddie just texted this to me. Do not gloat over me, my enemies, for though I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Proverbs 24, 16, for though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Psalms 37, 23, the steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, He shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. If you found one, text it to me, and I'm going to read it. It, The point is not that you never stumble. The point is you get up. You you lay aside the weight. You strip off the sin, and you keep running this race. Listen, nothing is more important than running this race. So it would be a good question to ask yourself, am I running this race today? Am I running this race today, or am I questioning my faith today? Am I, am I seeing how I look in my sight today? Am I wondering how I look in the sight of others today? Am I afraid I'll be rejected by men? Do I believe, if you be- see, it takes humility to believe the word of the Lord, that the work of Christ, that your faith in what Christ has done could make you right in God's sight. That takes humility. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay. I think I'm done with that fit, but (laughs) we'll see. Thank you, Jesus. Are we still online? We're good. All right. Thank you, Jesus. 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 
thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm so thankful for the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Audio still good? Verse 2, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege (laughs) where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully Mm. look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. Can everybody say amen? amen? We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength, strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. How many need endurance to run this race? Who would say they struggle with endurance? Caroline said that when she plays soccer, (laughs) she struggles with endurance. (laughs) How many have a week on really good and then three or four days like you just, you don't want to say you're hit because you don't want to have to do push-ups or wall sits, but you're like, I feel like I failed. That's not endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. Who in this room needs a develop a character development? Probably all of us, right? I would say so. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Without character, it's hard to rejoice when you run into problems and trials. I know this is a far stretch, but when you're playing sports and your team is losing... You find out what your character is like. I didn't ever like to be losing, but there was something about knowing that you can come back from losing, uh, being down. There's something about that, but you find out the front runners and you find out who are very, 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 very serious. And just like this virus, you find out who's actually in Christ Jesus and those are who are in a religious system. Verse 5, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. So if you're disappointed, it's not the hope of Christ. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. When we were utterly helpless, some versions say without strength, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. When we were utterly hopeless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right In God's sight, by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. That's justification. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because of our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. How many sin? How many sin on a daily basis? 
Hmm? Everybody have thoughts probably on a daily basis you wish you didn't think? Does that bad thought send you to hell? No. The answer is no. I mean, not if you're saved. Not if you, you're washed in the blood of Jesus. Not if you're placing your trust in him and you're, 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 you're a repentant believer. I guess that's redundant because anyways. But I think in this group sometimes if you make a mistake, you think that you're out of the will of God. You're out of heaven. All of a sudden you're on your way to hell. But is that the law or is, is that grace? That's law, right? If you think that you tripping on your little speed bump that you thought was a mountain and you're wrong, that means you have to save yourself. Good luck. Let me know if that works. No, don't. It won't. It, it already says it doesn't. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. Still, everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol, a represent, representation of Christ who is yet to come. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus. And and the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin sin led to condemnation. But God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and a new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. How we live our lives matters. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Your doubt never, ever should lead you to sin. It's That's what it's there for. That's why the devil brings it into your life. But your doubt hopefully will lead you to Jesus Christ. A lot of people have doubts because they rely on themselves. I'm begging you not to rely on yourself. It doesn't work. I'm just thinking about how many times I've gotten myself into a terrible place It's because I was trying to do I was I wasn't even trying to do the right thing. I was trying to not do the wrong thing. Do you all know there's a difference in that. I lived my life trying to not do bad things instead of actually just trying to do the right thing. And so that's how you can have one really good week of doing so good, so good, so good, so good. One mess up, going to hell. And I may not have thought I was going to hell, but the shame and condemnation that I allowed in through doubt, through fear, through shame and condemnation is, is it's, it will kill you. And so instead of not trying to do the wrong thing, Trying to obey the Lord is the most beautiful thing that you can do. And I say trying because you are going to fail at times. But we don't have to try to not do bad things. We have to try to say yes to who he is. Matter of fact, I had a young man ask me how he could quit smoking. Who, Chalky, I know she quit, but praise the Lord. Is there anybody else in this room tried to quit smoking before? Was it easy? 
Well, I would say this. Uh, most of the people I talked to have said I've been trying to quit for years. And I'd never smoked before, so I, I it wasn't like I was coming from experience. But I know enough to know that, I, first off, how are cigarettes even legal is surprising, right? They provide zero benefit to your life at all. Anyways, I got to thinking about, instead of saying no to cigarettes, what if you started saying yes to something else? And not just another thing, but Jesus. So if you're struggling with the same cycle of something in your life and you keep saying, Lord, I'm never going to do that again, but give it one day, you'll probably end up doing it again. And instead of condemning yourself, quit trying to say no to something and actually say yes to Jesus. Say yes to his grace. His grace is not just forgiveness of a sin. His grace empowers you to actually live out the life that he has called you to live. So, Lord, I promise you I'll never do this again. Well, good luck. Because that's still law. But to say, God, instead of this, I'm going to choose you. Instead of lust, Lord, I'm going to choose you. Instead of this medication that's making me feel wonky, I'm going to choose you. Consult somebody first or not. We've got to quit just saying no to stuff, and we need to learn to say yes to Christ. Yes, yes. Let's go back to the very beginning. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, not by what you've done, and certainly not by what you haven't done, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, everybody say faith. Faith. Say faith. Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. We can rejoice when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance. I had a goal at the gym after I tore, I got a hernia, whatever you want to call it. And when I started doing this, I was unable to do the thing that I wanted to do. But if I, once I started pushing through, I developed this thing called endurance. And so now the thing that I couldn't do before, I can do now. But it took, it took several months of tearing muscle and allowing that muscle to grow back. In the same way, problems and trials come to tear, to stretch, to pull, so that you can actually develop in endurance. And once endurance is developed, then you can have character. character that just keeps coming up you know and um we've read a, a lot of you i would i would s think most people know if you've been coming or listening to us for any length of time or read your bible <laughs> about the 10 virgins and they all had a lamp and they all had oil and a fire at one point but only the ones who kept enough oil were able to relight the fire and, and be ready when the bridegroom came. And T.B. Josh was the first person that I ever heard call that oil character. And I just think that's really interesting. Where was it? Oh, yeah. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Isn't that interesting? So the next time you question yourself so much in a way that could really chip away at your faith, Next time you could, instead of thinking, oh, I'm really just not good, or I'm just not saved, or I'm just not whatever, just think, I need more character. 
see it as training. Yes. Yes. Well, what's that? What's that saying? That. What's the saying? You don't want your abilities to take you somewhere your character can't uphold you. Your giftings. Your giftings. How many in this room have almost died? How many online have almost died? Because your gifting led you to a place that your character was not able to hold you <laughs> up. <laughs> Amen. Because uh. it is just, I just, you know, if we can just say, okay, faith is the point. And then faith expressing itself in love. If faith could really be the point of every day, it would be easier to get through the storms. Because a lot of times we go into self-preservation, then we're really afraid. If you, at any point, go from faith in the life of Christ to preserving your life, you are going to be trapped in fear for quite a while. However long you try to preserve your life is how long the fear gets to just. <laughs> Can I read something real quick? Yeah. Mark chapter three. Go there real quick. Uh, we just read this the other night, but let's do it again anyways. Or maybe it's chapter four. I don't remember. Yeah. Mark chapter four. My kids are homeschooled, so they don't get to do this, but. Well, they did one day. How many loved pop quizzes when you were in school? Nobody, Nobody right? Well, yeah. I love that Morgan was like. I probably did too. I didn't. I hated them. I thought they were unfair. I thought the teacher was wrong. Some people got sick that day. <coughs> and then, so pop quizzes are, the point of pop quizzes are to see what you know in that moment, Right. See if you're following. See if you're tracking. But when you have midterms and finals, some of y'all have stayed up for hours and hours and hours studying, correct? Okay, I went to bed at 10 o'clock. No matter what I knew or didn't know, 10 o'clock was my goal. Didn't matter if I knew it or didn't know it. I just thought 10 o'clock, I'm, I'm getting eight or nine hours, 10 hours. I'm, I'm going to be fine. I passed. I graduated college. I know that shocks many people. I graduated 3.0. Did a lot of guessing. Has anybody ever had a pop exam? Several, maybe? So I've never had a pop exam ever. Where, see, the point of an exam is that you have to study all the stuff, all the material over a long extended period of time. So let's read Mark uh, chapter 4, verse 35. Because I want us to remember that the Lord is developing character inside of us. He's developing endurance unless we don't let him. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat. With his head on a cushion, the disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Guess what that is? That's called fear, right? Mm -hmm. They get on a lake, out on the boat, fear, pop exam. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? This next line, I've read it for years, but I didn't get it till today. The disciples were absolutely terrified. That better be our heart posture towards Jesus Christ. How many times did we just read fear him for those who fear him, for those who fear him, for those who fear him? See, the problem is they started out fearing the storm. But when they saw Jesus rebuke the wind and the waves, they were terrified. Why else would they be terrified? Everything was calm. Some of y'all are in the middle of a pop exam right now. The disciples didn't get to study. Okay, if we're on the lake and Jesus has passed out. If Jesus is on the back of the boat, look, look at this. His head was on a cushion. He intended to go to sleep. He wasn't like, he didn't doze off in the, the front of the boat. 
He put his head on a cushion. He was planning on going to sleep like some of y'all do. And they were afraid of the storm. Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. I believe they were learning fear of the Lord. I believe they were learning exactly who Jesus was. The fact that he calmed the wind and waves actually scared them more than I believe that the storm did. But they weren't prepared for it. You can keep reading. You'll see a few chapters later. They're like, what? Same thing, right? Peter was doing this Peter thing. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. So as you're talking about character, I'm thinking Jesus did everything before the disciples did, ever did. And the point was he was teaching them character. He was teaching them endurance. Get on a boat. Let's go to the other side. How long did Jesus preach? I'm just saying there are some outings that there was no lunch break. We're not trying to do that, right? <laughs> there were some outings where the disciples were like, hey, everybody's starving. They've been preaching for several days. Should we go give them food? Is, should we let them go so they can get food? I just think endurance and character is being built. And if you could see this life that you're living as an actual test, and not a test like, oh, I hate taking tests. I'm not a good test taker. How many in this room or online have said I'm not a good test taker? Quit speaking that mess over your life. <laughs> what a cop out. Oh, I got a 70, but I'm not good at taking tests. Oh, okay. <laughs> My bad. My 80 really wasn't that good, right? Oh, I'm just a good test taker. What does that even mean? See, I didn't get a 3.0 because I was so so intelligent. I really believe that I graduated college because I thought I did what I was supposed to do, and I believed that what I did was enough for me to pass the test. I wasn't trying to get 100, and that's probably on me. I wasn't even trying to get a 90. I personally wasn't even trying to get an 80. I was trying to graduate. Get them degrees. But I want to say this. When I, when I work out, my favorite thing about working out is trying to do something that I couldn't do before. Some of y'all hate that. Hate, hate that part of working out. Jockey said yes. I'm going to ask that those of you who hate that start speaking it differently to your heart and your mind. Because then when you see the media that says this economic crisis could be worse than the crisis of 2008, instead of being like, oh, no, should I start? Should I start saving? Should I get a new job? Should I get eight jobs? Should I sell my house? Should I should I move in with 14 people? So our our rents like nothing. Huh? Should we social distance everything in our life? <laughs> if you're like holding your phone out here, that's not social distancing while you look at Instagram. <laughs> so the thing, the other thing I used to love is when I played, when I played football and when I played basketball, I always wanted to play against people that were better than me. Why? So I could get better. My favorite thing was to lose to people that were better than me as long as I was getting better. That's the only reason I ever made it. I wasn't good enough to ever play in the NFL. I made it to the NFL because I was just stubborn enough to lose enough to the right kind of people to teach me how to do it the right way. And I want to say to you, if you could learn to live this life as if it's training ground for what we're walking through right now, you will flourish when trials and tribulations come. Instead of fighting the trials and the tribulations, you're actually fighting character and endurance. Instead of fighting the tribulation, you're actually fighting the character and, the endur and endurance that God is trying to prepare within your life. In other words, when you wish you didn't have the trial and the trouble in your life, you were wishing you didn't have character. See, it's all perspective. You could say, I can't believe that we have to do this church online. I can't believe that we can only meet with 10 people for now. I can't believe that there's no toilet paper. It doesn't make any sense. But instead of seeing, instead of seeing a crisis Focus. and fussing on the crisis, what you're seeing is you're actually missing out on an opportunity to gain endurance and character.
The problem the church is, the reason the church is, is weak as it is, and I'm not calling all churches weak. What Amen. I'm saying is, is that most most churches that I know, most people that I know that call themselves Christians are acting the exact same as the world is acting. Amen. The Amen. same fear. Don't say that we're not doing anything out of fear, but out of great concern. It's the same thing. If you live your life just like the world and you're calling it great concern, you're just substituting fear for concern. But if you can see this life and every challenge and every tribulation and every mountain that's put in front of you, if you're about to be dragged into a fire as an opportunity to gain endurance for Jesus Christ and actually character so that at the end of the age you'll be able to stand tall and say Jesus is Lord, you will gladly go through a trial or a tribulation. I'm just tired of the Lord testing me. Well, then you're then you're tired of Jesus Christ. This entire life you're going to be tested. If I could just get married, I'd be complete. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Marriage is harder than being single. Yeah, but you don't know. Ain't I nothing do. wrong with being single. <laughs> oh, no. No, they did write this it, but it's not is right. so good. Do you all know how good this is? I, I want to back up just a little bit. I want you to, I want to make sure you get it because you know Kevin will say just something explosive and keep going. And I want to say it 20 times because I know endurance. that's how long it takes. <laughs> this church will build endurance. Just listen to me. Let's <laughs> try what he's trying to say. Um, <laughs> when you wish that you did not have troubles. When you wish that you can live a trouble-free life, what you are wishing for is to stay a very immature, at best, immature Christian. At best. At best, you are wishing to stay an immature Christian with no character. Well, and disclaimer for somebody in this room, like, say, Maddie, we don't pray. Lord, please bring as many trials and tribulations as possible. Right? They're going to come. Accelerated, Accelerated program. <laughs> Maddie's trying to get her master's. <laughs> no, I love it because I, I say that. The here's the It'll deal. I say that about Maddie because the, hardest, the harder the situation, the more Maddie would be in. <laughs> but that's the drive he's given her, though. I love that. But we don't just beg for more. God, my situation is so tough right now. Make it tougher. No, that's not. That's still not relying on him. God. Yeah, we're not seeking <laughs> trials. Right. Trials are promised. They're promised. We are seeking All the Lord, and the point is faith. Yes and amen. Hey. Can, can you start seeing the picture that's forming here tonight? If you can remember that the point is faith, you can get through any day. If the point is your comfort, that will depend on the day of the week. If your point is feeling good about yourself, good about this community, good about how the community feels about you, good about how people see you, you're just going to be a nervous wreck depending on what the day is and what people have said about you the night before, what you said about somebody and forgot someone else was listening. You know what I mean? There's just no telling what you're going to deal with tomorrow. And so if, if that's your measure is how you're perceived, if how you're perceived is a big deal for you, see, you just need to decide, my point is faith. Have I kept the faith today? Faith in what? Faith in who? Have I kept the faith today? That really, c that should be your just, I'm okay then. To, I'm okay today no matter what happens to you because those things that are coming and threatening to crush you are building your character and that character will build your hope of salvation yes. Yes. can I say something yes. to all you people out there that think people just sit around and talk about you <laughs> I don't even know if they like me um, we haven't said your name one time Oh. <laughs> I want to say most people uh -oh. in this group that Penny hear, 
oh, I, I just don't even know. Like, if I'm really a part of that group, we've never even probably brought you up. It's fine. You're good. I'm just saying I hear this a lot in the p- uh, moving forward. I just wonder what people are saying about me. Nobody's saying anything about you. You're fine. And if they are, they need to tell you. And if they're not, roll on. Mm-hmm. We need to stop focusing on what people are saying and focus on who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I think we manipulate fake persecution. I, th- I was I feel like nobody talked to me. Well, go talk to somebody else. Quit acting like you're being, you know, go talk to somebody else. Yeah, but they were already talking to somebody. Well, then wait, talk to Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I think the devil starts to manipulate, but when you let that doubt and frustration in, all of a sudden you think, well, am I even in a part of this group? Listen, if you just started coming to this church, let me tell you something. We started in a home. We weren't trying to be a church. We're still not sure that we're trying to be a church. (laughs) I'm just saying some of these people, some of these people have been in a part of this, whatever this is, they have been a part of this for years and they felt the same thing that you feel. Mm -hmm. Shine and I feel like, what are we doing? Are we, what are we supposed to be doing? I don't know. We don't know what we're doing. The day we know what we're doing, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> every single every single time we're going to gather, I feel less equipped to lead anybody <laughs> in this whole church. And as long as I don't feel equipped, we'll probably keep rolling on. The moment I'm like, I think I know what to do. Quit. We're done. We're going we're gonna to give you all a list of churches. Y'all just separate. And just <laughs> y'all go do it. I'm serious. Shine and I feel so utterly unequipped <laughs> to lead you guys anywhere. But the Lord called us, which means we need to be faithful for what he called us to do. And what he called us to do is not lead you guys in our ability. He said, hey, follow me. And so we're just going to follow him. And as long as we're following him, I pray that you all stay the course. But if you don't feel wanted, go to another church for your first couple services. They'll give you a cookie and a free cup of coffee. Kevin, you're getting And then you all can come back. (laughs) We'll We'll do cookies one day for... For the new people, but we'll let everybody have some. Because then we'd hurt feelings. Because then the people would be like, "Well, I didn't, I didn't get a cookie. I sat on Kevin's <laughs> kitchen floor at his first house. So just be thankful you got a chair." So what trial in your life are you praying for God to move? That God is actually waiting for you to embrace what He's bringing you through. Some of y'all are going to face some financial stuff, right? Some of y'all are already worried about, I lost my hourly job. Well, he's either your provider or he's not. Mm -hmm. Because obviously worrying about it does a lot. When you wake up tonight and you're like, what am I going to do for money? Don't go to Craigslist like general jobs. (laughs) Just wonder what I can do on this list. How How about open the real book and declare who he is? Thank you, Lord, that this is an opportunity for me to lean on you and develop character as it relates to my finances. I've relied and trusted on me for so long. I would love to learn how to trust you. You know why I can say that confidently? Because he's brought me through it twice. Maybe three times. I don't know. So what mountain are you hoping moves? And he's just like, climb the mountain. Climb the mountain. Climb it. Some of y'all can't climb the mountain because you're out of shape, spiritually speaking. So climb as high as you can, and then the next day, climb as high as you can, and then the next day, climb as high as you can, and I promise you at some point you're going to reach the top because that's how you develop endurance. Just because you don't make it over the mountain the first time does not mean you're a failure. It means he's probably taken you through something so that you can learn to rely on him for everything. Do you know that I've got to rely on him for my relationship with her? This one. And I like her. And she's easy. She's simple. She's not moody. Not really. She's not crazy emotional. She doesn't manipulate. (laughs) 
I don't talk to her, so I don't know. But I if but what I do is I can't I can't love on her unless I rely completely on Jesus Christ. How many of y'all heard me say that I never had a hard day probably in my entire life until I got married? I'm not at all joking about that. Everything I've ever wanted, I got. I'm not joking. Including me. Including you. If I thought I wanted it, I went and got it, and I got it. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I do. Mm -hmm. And it was every roof that we were ever under (laughs) collapsed. (laughs) Y'all, seriously, he's not joking. Like, he, I don't know that he had had a headache. I didn't. And then within like a month and a half of getting married, we had um, all our wedding gifts stolen. Um, Our wedding gifts were all stolen while we were on our honeymoon. I was diagnosed with tumor, told that I needed to get pregnant immediately if we were going to have a child, Um, then diagnosed with a brain disease. And told that I would need immediate surgery. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop right there. How many weeks How many weeks mm-hmm. married were we right there? Maybe two? Maybe a month and a half, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, I think. And then... Anyways, we don't um, know. And then told you can't get pregnant because you need brain surgery and be careful how you move your neck. Because I had to fly, uh, drive from Florida back to Nashville to see a neurosurgeon. Um Whatever you do, don't get pregnant. Come to find out I'm already pregnant. Uh, Can't get out of the bed because of all this pain, which they thought was the brain disease. It was actually, uh, I mean, I mean, I just remember looking over at the surgeon's office uh, and the guy was showing Kevin on the MRI, uh, the brain disease and the, the need for surgery and all this kind of stuff. And looking at Kevin, I didn't feel sorry for me. I felt sorry for him. Because his face was like, (laughs) I mean, all this stuff just got dumped on him. And I was, I mean, I was pretty accustomed to it. You know, I was like, I mean, this. I was more confused than anything else. Like, marriage was going to be so amazing, easy. So she can't get pregnant, but she is pregnant. She needs brain surgery. (laughs) Excuse me. (laughs) She can't get out of bed. Wait, what? Hello? What are, like, what am I supposed to do? But I see where he's led us now, 14 years later, 13 years later, however long we've been married. Mm-hmm. I think 13. Somebody will know. My mom will text us, mm-hmm. maybe, probably. My mom lets us know how many years we've been married and when our anniversary is, so praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. When I say she's easy, she doesn't care about that. She doesn't care about whether she gets flowers on her anniversary. You know why? She usually doesn't know what day it is. It's perfect. <laughs> she might not know what day Valentine's Day is. And I don't celebrate Valentine's Day. I think it's a I phony uh, make-up I'm holiday. I didn't. When he's saying all that stuff, like I didn't even really care about the tumor, the disease, or any of it. Just like, well, okay, whatever. You know. Loss of job. All right. Whatever. You know what I mean? Um... But it, but he had never faced anything like it, and so it was just really, really interesting to watch him react to not his own stuff, but like this brand new wife's like total breakdown. You know, you just but yes, the character that has been developed through those years. Oh my goodness! But see, we fought against the character of it, not on purpose. We weren't trying to fight against the character of it. We were just trying to get one mountain to move. We were trying to get one trial to leave. We were trying to get one one thing to stop. And I'll tell you, when one thing starts to pour in, I promise you, there's going to be others that are going to pour in. <laughs> yeah. We could have handled one at a time, but thirty-five at a time was real hard. <laughs> So what are you hoping moves that God's hoping that you'll embrace? If you could learn to embrace it, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. In the same way that if you can learn to embrace a little bit of pain at the gym, pain at the gym sometimes does not mean that you're doing an exercise wrong. It means that something's actually happening. Mm -hmm. That's good. 
<laughs> now make sure you consult somebody. Don't just do random stuff and be like, pain is good. No, that's not always. <laughs> Never been here before, but this feels not good, so I'm <laughs> developing character. No, so don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your shoulder? That's character development. No, that's not. That's the wrong context. <laughs> no, my pastor said I could do it. It's fine. <laughs> don't worry. It's good. But when you learn to embrace the pain of this life, not as pain, but as an opportunity to grow in Christ, it makes it all worth it. It makes every bit of it worth it. And I don't look forward to more trials. I'm not like, I wonder how many trials we can go through before he comes back. But the development of it all, when you can look back, some of y'all are so young. When you look back on your life, you're going to see what God was doing. You may not see why, but you'll see it. You'll see the development of it. Don't take as long as Cheyenne and I have. Don't take as long as us if you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Pass that test first. Pass the test. Here's the beautiful thing. Once you pass an exam, you go to the next grade. Guess what happens? More tests, good. More tests, good. I can't believe I'm going to another level. I can't believe it's just not blessings. No, you get to learn new. Th you get to learn new things, and then he's going to test you on those things to find out if your character can uphold the abilities and the gifts and the blessings that he's given you. This life is so fun. When you embrace what God is doing and how He's doing it, this is the greatest. This is the greatest time to be alive. It had been great to be here when Jesus was here. I'd love to have been a disciple. But you know what I'm saying. I am a disciple. We're at the end. We are coming to the end. It's not coincidence that Utah had an earthquake a couple of days ago or Monday. It's not a coincidence that Nashville and Texas had tornadoes. It's not a coincidence that locusts are tearing up East Africa right now. Locusts are tearing up East Africa. Both of my children better quit. <laughs> the sky is filled with them. There was a picture of a man in the field and you could hardly see him. It's not coincidence that the whole earth is shutting down corporate gatherings. It's not a coincidence that small businesses are struggling to stay open. You are alive at a great time. And if you can embrace being alive during this time, the Lord will multiply character and endurance in your life. I believe that because in the last days, his spirit is going to be poured out on who? All men. Do I need to take care of your kids? No. <laughs> well, I character just, development. I just want to say that um, in the social distancing and we have been in touch with um, to sound fancy medical professionals and law enforcement, local law enforcement, to talk about everything, all the decisions that we've been making. Those are changing day by day, it seems like. Um, if you actually get locked down, if we, if we end up being in lockdown, I don't know if we will or not. I just want to say that for some of you, that may be the best thing that's ever happened in your life. <laughs> just let that settle for a second. What if you actually learn to rely on God for everything? Because we have gotten so accustomed to our culture. I'm going to say for during this time and even after this is lifted, one of the best things you could do after church is go home. I think more problems arise in this little community from casual hangout time than any other thing I've seen. Um, and that 
that that's from a lot of a lot of different things and you know we're not against it we don't police anyone's relationship or dating oh, i will say i encourage you not to start a new dating relationship during this time because it will probably be influenced by this time just a thought uh date jesus if he leads you into relationship and you know it's from the holy spirit and it's heading toward marriage yay if you're lonely and somebody's cute and has on great cologne or perfume <laughs> let's just not okay <laughs> let's, let's just let's just do it. You better know that's the reason a lot of people do. That's and people, I mean, people right now are like desperate for a touch or a hug or eye contact. We really should be people that would be okay if you can't survive your room for two weeks. How could you go to prison and have peace? I mean, we've never made that rule here. We, if you want a suggestion in your relationship, we're even careful to give out advice about that. But I'm just going to tell you from where I sit, looking at my past and watching some of y'all's predicaments, the best thing you could do is <laughs> social distance occasionally. <laughs> double, double the distance. Yeah. Well, what's the point? <laughs> I mean, I'm seriously, if you're struggling with loneliness, if you're struggling with like needing to be needed or something or wanting to be needed or wanted to be wanted, like the whole point of that is Jesus. And I believe all it's going to do is distract and take your eyes off him anyways. Mm hmm. We're excited that the Lord has built this, brought this little community. We love being in community with God and each other. We will probably start meeting daily. You know, probably one thing that will push that is as we're going more and more to online and fewer and fewer, uh, hopefully we plan to be doing online every day. Um, and then if we um, feel from the Lord to do the drive-up prayer. So we're all about fellowship. Um, with each other, warning one another, encouraging one another daily. Um, another thing that we're setting up right now are contact people for you to get a hold of if you can't get a hold of me and Kevin or actually to contact first because now with this going on, we have even a whole other. I mean, today I don't think I've ever been um, had as many SOSs. You know, but just remember this. Like I said at the very beginning, we like to say around here, don't worry, the whole community is getting attacked. Now it's a whole, w it's the whole world. The whole world's under so attack. So don't, don't panic. Don't panic with your next situation. If you could decide right now, it's about faith. It's about the life of Christ. I am made right in God's sight. By faith, because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. And just refuse to panic about your next situation. I don't care if it's something you did, something you didn't do, something that was done to you, a nightmare, an actual spiritual attack, a physical attack. If you could choose right now, I will not panic. The point is faith. The point is faith. And the next thing that hits me, I'm going to remember by God's grace and his help that my uh, character is being strengthened. And that is actually going to strengthen the hope of salvation in my life. And can I encourage you in that? Mm -hmm. That if God sees it fit to bring something into your life, that means he thinks that you can handle it. And if God thinks you can handle it, how dare you think you can't? Mm-hmm. He's not going to. The Bible's clear. The Bible's clear about what he's going to bring into your life. Why did he allow Job to be attacked? 
Because he knew that he was not going to turn his back on God. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. don't turn your back on God for something he thinks that is necessary for you in your life. (laughs) Mm -hmm. If you're walking through something, he he sees it fit that you're walking through it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you're a failure if you fail. Get back up and try it again. He only brings things into your life that are going to strengthen you. They're going to give you endurance that are going to lead you right to him. He's going to make you look weak at times. But the point is not your weakness. The point is his strength in your weakness. That's right. Yeah, but I'm just really weak. Good. That's when he can be made strong. Praise God. Really strong in that area. That means you don't need him in that area. You don't realize you need him. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise report, my grandmother. Does not have coronavirus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Nobody. Well, um, somebody apparently do, but we don't. His grandmother. Yeah. He he heard she was sick today, and she got tested. And she does not have that. Praise God. My grandmother's potentially the strongest Grammy. Yeah, mm-hmm. Grammy. Grammy's mm-hmm. still doing it. Oh. Mm-hmm. She had a personal trainer up until a couple years ago. She's only like ninety-one, so. Were you going to read that, Martin Luther King, when you said it to yourself? I mean, yeah, eventually. Oh, okay. (laughs) I was just reminding you of it in case you wanted to. Well, let's pray. How about that? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We will also be, um, by the grace of the Lord, we're doing a lot of new things suddenly. It feels like this, this thing hitting the world is uh, kind of launching us into doing things that we felt for quite a while. And one thing that we want to do um, is make ourselves more available, depending on what happens if we're still allowed to meet, even if it's in a park six feet away, we'll pray for you. Um, If it's not on the phone, FaceTime, just setting up more times, I think it's a good thing to do for sure with the families very soon set up FaceTime, pray over the families, um, because this is just a crazy time. And so it's not just like you're hearing what's going on. There's an actual spirit of fear on the world. Like it's a fog. I mean, I had to come through it this morning. You know, I had to like, like it took me a while. I, I didn't feel fear or anything, just a fog. Just like, oh, it was so hard to get up and going. Um, So don't feel like you're alone in any battle that you're facing. I don't care what it is. Jesus knows what you're going through. And a lot of us are facing the same kind of battles. The Bible says that you can uh, take comfort in that, that believers all over the world are going through the same types of things. So don't don't, uh, lose heart. Take heart. Don't feel like you're a lousy, lonely loser. <laughs> Don't feel like you're an utter failure. Remember that faith is the point. Faith is the point. Faith is the point and faith is expressing itself in love. And I really look forward to the time when we're all back together as the family God's created here and more and more being added. We're hugging and crying all over each other and all that. But in the meantime, really respect what the government is saying. I love how T.B. Joshua said it. A good Christian is a good citizen. And so really, uh, don't freak out. I'm not saying you have to watch the news all the time, but be aware of what uh, President Trump is asking. Be aware of what you know, as we were in touch with local law enforcement, we realized, like, um, there's quite a difference in, in all the states. So be aware. I'm checking daily. In fact, I've checked a couple times a day. What are the new, um, man, you know, what what's new for Tennessee? What's new for Nashville? Because all that's been changing. So be respectful. If you get stuck in your house, don't think of it as stuck in your house. Think of it as time to uh, read the Bible. Read through the Bible. And actually pray. Organize your kitchen cabinets. (laughs) Whatever you want to do. But like worship. Worship. 
worship the Lord. Dance in your kitchen. Don't just try to not be in fear. Worship the Lord. Break through it into worship. Dance all over your house. Worship the Lord. Don't just read your Bible. Pick up your Bible and dance with Jesus. Dance with him. Dance with him. Love him. Sit and say, I'm not moving till I feel you. Not moving from this spot until I feel your peace. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Have fun with Jesus. Have fun with Jesus. Listen to him. Now, I was explaining this to Elijah because Elijah already has um, strong giftings of the Holy Spirit. And when it's a gift of the Holy Spirit, so one thing that the Lord has gifted him with is discernment and words of knowledge. And so it, it comes pretty, it's supernatural to him to hear for someone's situation. But we were talking about for him to hear the Lord for his own life takes him being still. <laughs> so a lot of people who hear very clearly for, uh, for others really lack clarity direction and discernment for their own life that's one reason is because we need the body we need each other you know but another reason is sometimes we refuse to be still you don't have to be still to, if you have the gift of discernment gift of word of knowledge you don't have to be still to hear for somebody it just comes amen anybody but to hear the word of the lord for your life takes stillness quietness Lord I believe you're going to speak to me and I'm going to sit here and wait as we're moving forward and we're establishing contact people in the teams people to call people to text more encouragement um, what they're not going to become your 24 hour therapist in any way just like I'm not uh, we are, they are going to be instructed to do what we do. Point you to Jesus. Point you to the Word. Point you to the Holy Spirit. And the Lord's highlighted people for this season. Mm -hmm. And so we're not asking that you trust them. We're asking that you trust God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. But really and truly, every time, I'm just going to ask you, when you're tempted to reach out to someone, you know, just because they're, uh, Jamie showed really, um, she showed great wisdom to me when she first came into this group one night. She was like, I don't want to keep you too late. I've heard that people keep you, like, try to outweigh each other, but I just have a question. Can I ask you? I was like, yeah, sure. And she was like, I don't have the best track record of people that I ask advice. Can I share exactly what you said? Because it was so beautiful. She said, I would like your wisdom on if I have a, a question who I could reach out to in this group. I, want, I don't want to just assume that just because they're here and they act however that it's someone that I should reach out to. I'm going to say that loud. Just because someone goes to this church does not mean they should be giving you advice. You may be asking for someone for advice who still has a hundred demons. <laughs> Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, if you can have, what was the le the legion? Uh, how many? Was it like 600 or 6,000 or something? I guess somebody could still have a hundred demons. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm just saying just... But what she said, she said, before now, I have been drawn to reach out to people for advice that would make me feel good about myself. And I don't want to do that. I want to know who could I go to that would point me to the Lord and tell me the truth about myself. So we feel the Lord is, is going to help in this season steward that to where everybody didn't feel like they're dying all at once and we're just <laughs> not answering your text. <laughs> we love you so much. Or you just feel like, I don't even know what to do now. 
the, the bad answer is always going to be pray. Read your Bible. In fact, please don't ever approach us or anybody else if you have not prayed and read your Bible. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't sign up for another counseling service. Please don't go to a new anything. If you have not sat in stillness and waited on the Lord, please don't ask me what you should do. In stillness. One of my favorite things on Sunday when um, when Mikey was still, and we heard later it was a miracle uh, for him to be, I don't know how many hours he was like that. Can you find that in patience for me? I think I'm almost there. Turn my spit book. Am I in the right direction? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Lamentations, um, when he was just stuck in the presence of the Lord for so long, um, when I opened to this and then he wanted, to, he asked for my Bible, I remembered about a year and a half ago, around 10 p.m., um, the Holy Spirit told me, let no sleep come to your eyes, cry out for the souls of the children. And so that night, I, I decided, okay, I believe that was the Holy Spirit. I won't go to sleep. So I didn't close my eyes to rest until the sun came up the next morning. And, and I meditated on lamentations through that night. And listen to what it says right here in Lamentations 3, 25. The Lord is good to those who depend on Him, to those who search for Him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. And it is good for people to submit at an early age, say at an early age, to the yoke of His discipline. Thank you, Lord. The other passage I have highlighted here is verse 38. Does not the Most High sin both calamity and good? So why should we mere humans complain when we are punished for our sins? Now this is in the Old Testament, but the Lord is still in charge of what comes upon the earth. And I just want to say... Um, Sometimes when people come in, they're terrified that if they, that they, if they stumble, we're going to kick them out. <laughs> when Paul cast the person out of the church for very, very much unrepentant sin, uh, it was still for their soul to be saved. The point was still love for the cast them out to Satan, the destruction of the body, so their soul might be saved. So let's always focus on, I was talking to someone earlier, today is not the day of judgment, today is the day of salvation. So when you view others and things they're going through and trials and temptation, today is the day of salvation. So remember that for yourself too. Don't allow condemnation to come on you. The devil would love for you to get tripped up, for you to get attacked, and 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 convince you that you're condemned. So, because when you feel condemned, you you're like, well, then what's the use, right? Today is the day of salvation. This is not the time. This is not the time to go into condemnation. This is not the time. Today is the day of salvation. So I want to. Uh, because we've got some baby babies in the community right now. And, and they might be like looking around and judging themselves by who they think the rest of them are. Do you, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? They might look at someone else's life and go, oh, no trials, no tribulations, no sins. I want to be like that. And then have a bad day or something and start feeling all this condemnation. 
don't don't let that be. Do you know that someone who's been here a long time could be tempted by your new joy? I'm like, man, I wish I, man, they just came in and got free immediately. I've been trying for two years. I've actually heard that. So sometimes the new people compare themselves to the olders and the olders compare themselves to the news. Just stop it. Just, just, just does your life line up here and stop looking around. I'm serious. If you get, if you get locked into your house, be thankful. Might be the best thing that ever happened to you. Just to learn to be with Jesus. Uh, it'd be a good time to fast from social media at that point. <laughs> because I've got a feeling social media's got to get cray cray. Giving you all kind of options for the quarantine. That will not get you any closer to Jesus. Amen. Don't go with the flow unless it's the Holy Ghost. Just go with the Holy Ghost flow. 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 flow. If the flow ain't the Holy Ghost, change the flow. If the flow ain't the Holy Ghost, you better change the flow. <laughs> Listen, if you walk in a room, I got a, a text earlier, Keshan's just reading his Bible in the lobby, and I felt so much, I said, thank you, Jesus. You walk in a room, even if it's in this little fiery community, and the flow ain't the Holy Go flow, change the flow, or go. <laughs> if the flow ain't the Holy Ghost, you better change the flow, get up and go. If the flow ain't the Holy Ghost, you better change the flow or get up and go. If the flow ain't the Holy Ghost, you better change the flow or go. I'm serious. You walk in and somebody's being weird or jealous or gossipy or whatever. Don't judge them. Read the Bible. Read it out loud. That's one of the only places that you will not uh, be looked at like you're odd. And if you do, just read it anyway. You just start reading. Until that, well, look at what I turned to. Until the time came. <laughs> Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's character. That was a flip. That was a flip. What? Psalm 105, 105, uh, 19. Until the time, say until the time. Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's character. better know it 105.19 see because God has a time to fulfill the dream he gave Joseph didn't give himself that dream and the dream only came to Joseph to fulfill the plan of God for the people of God Joseph only had a dream from God that had God's timing on it that was for God's plans and purposes for the people of God. Not to make Joseph great. Joseph became great in the sight of men so that he could save the people of God. Same with Esther. But until the time came to fulfill that dream, he tested Joseph's character. Oh, man, that was a flip. You see it, the flow? Try it. Try it. 
I, I, we, 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 